When you have a destiny to fulfill, not everything is your fight. This video is about refining what has your attention. In this life, you are part of a divine plan. Each of us is. And each of us has a role that only we can fulfill. And although we're not sure what this role is, the way that we become more equipped to serve the role and to serve humanity is by the lessons that come into our life. So anything that happens, any conflict that you experience, any hardship that you experience, anything that causes you to grow and learn and be a fuller person and take that fuller expression into the world, this is part of your soul growth. This is the point. What Pushy Nakshakra serves to do is bring into conscious awareness those techniques that will take you where your desired outcome is, thus where your destiny is, what your work in this world is. Pushinak Chakra is considered especially auspicious in beginning any endeavor. It is especially favored with spiritual endeavors. Pusha is exalted in Jupiter, which wants us to expand, and is ruled by Saturn, which helps us to focus. Pushinak Chakra is about helping you grow. Symbols associated with it are a cow's udder, a woman's breast, and a flower. The udder and the breast are nourishment through milk, and the flower is the blossoming, the growth of one's spiritual aspirations. The very simple question for this moon phase is the relationships around you, the work that you do, the people you surround yourself with, the activities you embark upon. How do these nourish you? So first things first, you are not for everyone. The past several cycles have been bringing out the disparity between what you're trying to do in this life, you trying to be your fullest expression, your most honest expression of yourself, and how that rubs against the people close to you, and how that erodes on the values that you've held. So you've been faced with very uncomfortable truths, You've been faced with storms, with clearing. It's been this under the ground energy, this storm energy, this like what's left after the hurricane energy. Okay, so to set everything in context, the energy now is like walking out of the dark woods and you're walking into the clearing and you're seeing all the space that's available. Some people call the psychic space the field. So the clearing, the field. Now you can walk in to what you're ready to walk into. Maybe you've noticed that your dream life is a little bit different now. Perhaps your energy is coming more online. Your intuition is coming more online. Your abilities are coming more online. Because you no longer have to deal with what was in those woods, because you no longer have to deal with what Pluto's been showing you, you're not quite finished with it. We're still walking through it, but we're not in the depths of it any longer. There aren't any more surprises at this point. You know what you know. And with that knowledge, what's in front of you, that's the opportunity. Pushyanak Chakra is about sacrifice. And it's about sacrificing because we have a goal to reach. And this goal is our spiritual expression. But more specifically, it's what we are bringing into the world. It is through sacrifice of certain things that we are able to bring spiritual energy into the world. How does God enter into the world? God doesn't show up because, again, God's not a person. God is not a personified anything. The will of the divine occurs in the world because we, as people, bring it into the world. And that's what Pushyanak Chakra is about, the creation of spiritual energy in the world. The sacrifice takes place because to live such a life and to devote our time and attention to spiritual endeavors means that we are choosing some things and sacrificing others. The deity of Vishnu is associated with Pushya, and Vishnu is organization. So you've come out from these dark woods, and now you have this clearing in front of you. You have the ability to create and to organize. And so Pushya, in essence, because it's bringing the divine into the world through you, you get your orders, you get your instructions, you get a clearer indication of what it is you're supposed to be doing. But it doesn't come free. It's again this Jupiter and Saturn. You grow because you have restricted and focused your energy. 
So on the part of the nakshatra, on the part of the energy, it's seeking to expand you, but the responsibility that you have is clearing the way so that that expansion can occur. All right, so just having a look at this chart, two major things to notice. The first, if you're new to astrology, blue lines are harmonious and red lines are discordant. The second thing to notice is, look where the moon is. It's transitioning from second to third house. Look where the sun and Saturn are, transitioning from eighth to ninth house. So it's this transitioning. And then even in the 11th house, you have the nakshatra transitioning. So everything is just about moving to the next direction. It's right on the edge, right? So like right on the edge of that clearing, right on the edge of action, right on the edge of the deepness of our contemplation and the darkness of what our path has been so far. We're right on the edge of the light and the place that we've been moving toward. Okay, so the moon. It's moving from the second house to the third house. Second house is your esteem and how you establish your esteem in the world. What you have to show for what you've done. This is what worldly esteem is. But you see it's transitioning from the second house to the third house. And the third house has to do with taking in new information. It has to do with how you think about things. It has to do with how you communicate things. So you're coming from a place of your internal esteem and maybe how others regard you and noticing how other people regard you and on what basis they hold you in esteem or do not hold you in esteem. That's the internal. And now we're moving to the external expression. So what you're doing with that and how you're going to communicate who you are now. The next transition, Saturn moving from eighth to ninth house. Eighth house has to do with the depths of your transformation. It has to do with the past. It's ruled by Pluto and Mars, which is all about going through the depths and then seeing what you'll do with it. Once you've looked at the darkness of everything, what action you're going to take, what transformation you're going to make. So we're coming out of the eighth house and then we're going into the ninth house. And the ninth house is refined thinking. It's actually opposite the third. The third house is taking in new information, but the ninth house is doing something much higher with it. It's the refining of it. The 11th house has to do with technology. And here we have the Uranus and Mars. Mars is action, drive, initiation, really wanting to do something. And Uranus is, it's sudden change, but Uranus always has the drive for utopia. Uranus is trying to make it better. And so it's sudden change because it's really looking to clear things up, but it will do so quickly. And in a way that is not necessarily comfortable for you, but it will do it quickly. And the point again is utopia. Uranus is trying to work for the best possible outcome. So you have the moon, you have the mentality, you're deciding what you want to do. Then you have the sun, your soul expression in Capricorn, the form that expression will take going from the internal depths to the ninth house, which is you're going to put it into some form, some practice, some devotion, some ritual, some learning, but you're going to do something with it. And then 11th house, the energy with which it will come about. Let's talk a little bit more about the 11th house. Technology in the Vedic sense isn't technology like computers. Technology is magic and it's magical rituals. It is the way that magic is used to change sublevels of reality. How you think about something has an effect on how you feel about something. And then how you feel about something has an effect on your entire reality. This is the realm of magic. So how we think about something, how we feel about something changes the reality itself. Another story now about Brihaspati. Indra was holding court. So imagine dancers, music, a uh, beautiful spectacle, everybody there to admire Indra. Rehospiti walks in. Rehospiti is the guru of the gods, not an insignificant presence. Indra does not notice. Indra is very taken up with his own self-importance. He's the king. He doesn't even notice the energetic presence that has just come into the room with him. Rehospiti is dissatisfied with this and leaves. Indra also doesn't notice when he left. So while enjoying the worldly pleasures, Indra was oblivious to the strength of the energetic presence that was there with him. He was oblivious to the fact that the all-knowing, the guru of the gods was in his presence. Something we can take from this. In examining Venus and Pluto, our relationships, 
what has our attention. The lack of acknowledgement, the lack of reciprocal respect that you're subjected to is detrimental to your spiritual life because your spiritual life, in essence, is magic, is working at the emotional level, is working at the mental level. This is how the energetics work. A very basic level. Have you ever been angry and tried to meditate? Doesn't work. Have you ever really been jealous and tried to do an energy healing? Doesn't work. Have you ever been really angry and tried to do a reading for somebody? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work like that. The energy and your mentality and your emotional state are all intricately tied. So if you are walking into situations where somebody, I'm not saying that somebody needs to hold you in higher regard. What I am saying is that somebody needs to respect you the same as you respect them. And regardless of whether your spiritual beliefs are what their spiritual beliefs are, you have a mutual respect for one another. Sometimes our compassion overtakes us. Our Venus overtakes us. Venus just wants the love. And so Venus just wants to love indiscriminately. Pluto saying, it's time to stop that shit. When we talk about love, there are different expressions of love. The way that a narcissist loves you is poison. The way that an abuser loves you is abusively. So when we say love, what are the characteristics that are involved with that love? Is there a dignity attached to it? Is there a respect attached to it? Do you feel enriched by being in someone else's presence? Do you feel nourished by being in that situation? Pushya is about nourishment. And so as we step forward into the readings, it's going to be looking at what is nourishing you. And the situations which are not nourishing you, but are depleting you, these are the ones you've seen enough. So like they have to go, they have to go if you want them to go, but make no mistake about it. You can't be around people who deplete you mentally and emotionally and maintain the energetic capability of bringing divine will into the world. You can do anything you want, but if you are trying to walk your spiritual path with the utmost integrity, the relationships which do not respect that integrity and do not respect you and do not nourish you are not ones that belong in your field. Let's stick on Venus and Pluto for a minute. Typically, astrologers are going to tell you that Venus has to do with your money and your romantic relationships. True, but let's expand that definition. Venus is what has your attention. Venus is what attracts you. Venus is what you like. Venus is what you pay attention to. And this is critical because you only have so much attention to pay. Notice the language. You pay attention. When you're really tired, you say, I'm spent. You've given it all. Energy is finite. And when you're talking about bringing divine energy into the world, that energy is precious. So again, let's come back to Venus. What has your attention may not necessarily be what you like. Fourth house roots have been a prominent theme for the past few cycles. So say you are in a situation with family members who are just not on board with you. They don't dig your path. There's not a way that you're going to find connection. There's not a way that you're going to find reconciliation. You might be the only one who's bothered by it. And what you do, you think about it. You put emotion into it. You put your thought into it. So you see? your mental energy being expended, your emotional energy being expended. Anytime you put energy into something that doesn't matter, you've thrown it away. You've tossed it aside when you could have used it for something productive. And this is both the dynamic of Venus and Pluto saying, what are you paying attention to? And what, why are you paying attention to this? And then the Saturn and Jupiter, if you want to have a more prosperous spiritual path if you want to be more productive in this area, why are you throwing away your energy? You need it over here. It's the same thing with anything you consume through the senses. I'm talking about news, I'm talking about social media, I'm talking about politics, I'm talking about arguments. Where are you directing your energy? What are you paying attention to? Because whatever has your attention is what you are paying attention to. That is what you're paying your energy into. And whatever you're paying it into, you're not paying it into your spiritual path. Focus. 
And when we focus, our devotion becomes mastery. Again, you can do anything you want, but be cognizant of where you are investing your energy. Your energy is your resource. So that's where you are investing your time. That's where you are investing your emotion. That's where you are investing your mentality. Make sure where you are investing yourself is in the path that will move you forward. It's in a direction that will get you where you want to go. This is what Pushinak Chakra is about. It's about concentrated, sacrifice, focus to get you where you need to go. This path does not lead you where you want to go. This path does not lead you where you want to go. This path leads you where you want to go. And because you have the experience and because you have the knowledge and because you've been doing the work, those situations which do not serve your path, which do not serve your higher good, which do not respect you, which deplete your emotional and mental state, which interferes with your energetic abilities, thus which interferes with your ability to bring the divine will into the world, because you've done the work, because you've done the critical examination, because you've done the self-reflection, you can let those go. Virgo, this full moon is occurring in your third house. And your third house has to do with taking in new information. It has to do with the way that you think, your writing, your phone calls, your correspondence, your, um, your marketing. It also has to do with short distance travel and your siblings. So in these areas, what is nourishing you? Conversely, what is not nourishing you? First things first, like what's depleting you? Because that just needs to go. What is taking up your attention? And do you like it? Look specifically in the 10th house for this. 10th house has to do with your work in the world, your career, your public reputation, generally your, um, your vocation. What is taking up your time and attention? Pluto's asking you to look what has your attention there. And if it's anything that is not helping you along your path, is not helping you to become a higher expression of yourself, it's time for it to go. Now, come back into your third house. Where are you finding nourishment? What's available to you that maybe you haven't tapped into? Virgo likes to take care of everything. You like to see to everything. You like to make sure everything is just so and is perfect. And you're so critical of yourself. You're so critical of yourself. And when you think about nourishment, typically you think about what somebody owes you. Not like, not in a mean way, just in a Virgo way. Because that's how the math adds up. Reciprocal, because you give to people, they should give to you too. But the emotion of it, the actual nourishment of it, the actual how do you feel at home someplace? How do you feel replenished someplace? Look what's close to you. Look what's around you. Look what you can do. Like, um, can you go on a short trip? What's your relationship like with your siblings? Is there room for improvement there? Is, something, is there something you can do there? Also, have you learned something new lately? or are you a little stagnant? What is going to replenish you? What is going to help you along on your spiritual path? How you take in information, and I'll say like the way that you take in information. Now's the time to pay heed to that and pay heed to that in true Virgo nature because third house is opposite ninth house. Ninth house is where you refine your mind is where you refine your education, where you refine the information. Third house is where you take it in and spread it. One of the four agreements is be impeccable with your word. And this is something to bear in mind for right now. Be as Virgo as possible with the information that you're taking in right now. Be very critical, be very mindful of how all the information adds up, lines up. What's supposed to be there? What's not supposed to be there? Are you being misled? Because disinformation will never nourish you. Truth will nourish you. What you pay attention to right now and how your life is transforming as you're putting things in order. Jupiter is looking to expand you in your fifth house. That's of investments, investors, creativity, writing, creating, pleasure, so how you do your communication right now, how you do your information right now, 
how you are enriching your mind, how you are nourishing yourself and seeing to your own nourishment at the level of you know, community, just what's around you. This is a critical base in being able to expand your creative self. So see what resources are available to you. And for right now, do something that makes you feel nourished. And if it doesn't make you feel nourished, be like a Virgo, get done with it. So in conclusion, some thoughts. You're not for everyone. And all the time you spend trying to convince others that you belong there is time you could have spent doing something else. Weight of the world. Boundaries. Let it go. This is not your story. If you are in a position where you are constantly not respected, not nourished, misunderstood, nobody's trying to understand you. If you're in one of these situations, not every battle is yours. Not every fight is yours. Not every burden is yours to carry. Let it go. Sometimes harder than letting a situation go is letting go the attachment to what we thought the situation should be. What those people were supposed to have meant to us. What relationship we were supposed to have. Because the world told us that we were supposed to have that relationship. If it's not going that way, look at the evidence in front of you. Check out the energetic evidence within you. Let it go. Water your garden. Nourishment, body care, rest. The past few weeks, you may have noticed emotional turmoil. A wiry feeling, maybe being exhausted, maybe your um, non-waking life was very active. Maybe your energies are coming online now. Physically, in addition to the exhaustion, perhaps you've been purging in different things. And that's good because that means you've been doing the work. Because with emotional and mental purging comes physical purging. So if you've been sick or if you've been having, a, if your body's been acting in weird purging ways, good, let it go. Big picture thinking. These pillars keep coming up on cards I pull. There's a saying, small people talk about people, but don't you talk about people. You talk about big picture thinking. You are standing at the precipice of the future. You are receiving your divine marching orders. You are seeing what it is that you are supposed to be building in the world. And this moment didn't just arrive. This moment has been something that you're working toward. You have been working toward. You've suffered toward it. You have so much invested in right now. And everything that's coming, you deserve it. We the Hathors. Hathor, Egyptian goddess, symbolized by cow. So deep love, mother's milk birth as a portal. What you are creating, what you are organizing, what you are bringing into being, you are birthing something. And all the time that you've spent trying to convince the people who talk about people, the people who talk about things that you're not interested in, when you're done with that, you can direct all your attention back here, creating what you love to do in the first place, what you're good at doing in the first place, what you're meant to be doing in the first place. So for this full moon, if you were ever going to do a ritual, if you wanted to do a clearing ritual, this is a great full moon to do it. And so here are some things to help. The metal with astrological correspondence to the moon, silver. So use something silver. Moon is associated with water. So you can use water for your ritual, symbolically washing things away. If you're working with having more structure, that's Saturn, use lead. If you want to work with Jupiter, use tin. If you want to work with your Venus, copper. These are just suggestions. You can also look up stones or other items that have astrological correspondence. Or, alternatively, don't use anything because you don't need any of it. What you need is your intention. What you need is your clear energy. So if you take anything from this video, take this. Anything that impedes upon your clear energy and your good intention, get rid of that. Anything that doesn't nourish you, get rid of that. Because the most important thing, if you are bringing divine will into the world, is that your vessel is clear. So that's clear of distress, that's clear of questioning, that's clear of ridiculous conversations you shouldn't be in. Clear. This is what the full moon is about. Mm -hmm.